Yeah, let's go. All right, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing kind of another Q&A thing from my Instagram where I pulled you guys on life, workout, daily type activity questions that you guys have been learning for a long time. A lot of the general themes were about motivation and like actually going to the gym, what to do once you're there, how to stay consistent, if there are cheat meals allowed, what kind of diet I should be eating, gym friends and shyness, and how do you, how do you make friends once you're there at the gym? If you're seeing results versus not seeing results, what it means to be a Christian and an influencer in a in an industry that can be very prideful and egotistical and then how to deal with crappy days that was kind of like the general theme of the questions that I saw that I wanted to answer. And in the background of this video, I'm going to be showing off my gym workout routines, basically everything that I'm doing, some ideas to help you guys, because I know a lot of you just want to know what the heck do I freaking pick up when I go to the gym. So if you're not following my Instagram, be sure to do so as that's where I like to engage with y'all about these types of things. And that's where most of my fitness content is going to be posted that and TikTok because the gym vlogs over there just work. Okay, it's just great. And as always, if you like the content, like the video and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me as this is just the most fun type of content to post. And it's definitely the new passion and hobby. And so any support would be appreciated. So let's talk about motivation for a second. When I first started working out, when I first tried it, it was back in high school and I spent maybe two weeks in the gym, worked out for 20 to 30 minutes, would get exhausted, go home next day so sore because I've never used those muscles that intently before. And I'd give up. The motivation would die. I'd be like, this is not worth it to me. It was not until late in college and then after college that I finally got the true desire to go to the gym and start seeing a change. I know for a lot of my audience, you guys probably have gone through the same thing where you've tried it, you've, you've dipped your toe into the water of working out, and then you've been like, no, this is not worth it. This is boring. This is dumb. This is going to take way too long way too much work. I don't want to allot the time in order to make this happen. That's fine. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that working out is the best thing ever, nor am I going to tell you it's going to solve all your, your your problems. I guarantee you most of the problems that you think working out is going to solve, it will not. So I just want to prepare you for that reality. But I will say ever since I started lifting and having that be a routine part of my day, it's been something I genuinely look forward to. Sometimes it's the highlight of my day going to the gym. And that's a crazy thing. Like who would have thought that that would ever become something that's like, wow, like this was the highlight of my day. But that's where I'm at right now. I've been working out for a little over a year and a half now. And initially the motivation to get in the gym came solely from the fact that I just felt like I was a skinnier guy and I wanted to look different. In that lies a problem because that implies I was comparing myself to other people people, other peers, other friends. And comparison is not a great thing because the root is jealousy and envy and and that's bad and that's wrong. But I think it was a healthy motivating factor at the time to basically see where my friends were, what their interests were with working out and be like, hey, I kind of want to try that. I want to do that. I want to be I want to look like that because I truly believe that with a, with enough hard work and dedication, anyone can get to both a healthier and stronger physique that they can be happy with. I will say, though, going from where I've been to where I am now, that whole satisfaction thing of I made it or I'm finally like where I wanted to be. That's just it's just never going to be the case. But I mean, the Bible tells us that that's going to be the case in the world. We're never going to be satisfied with anything, whether that's financial means, physical means, any other means. This world will never satisfy and we will be constantly wanting more. And I truly believe with all my heart that the only thing that will satisfy that craving of feeling complete is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I can talk about that a little bit later. But just to prepare you guys that the motivation it takes to get to the gym is tough. Those first two to three weeks are going to be the hardest weeks of training your brain to like working out because it sucks. I'm telling you, I did 20 to 30 minutes and I'd call it quits. But once you get past that soreness phase and that, you know, like entry level, OK, OK, I'm starting to get a routine. I'm going every day. Once you get past that, it becomes a habit. And to me, it's just as necessary as eating food. How do you get there? How do you get your brain there? It takes the same determination as getting up in the morning as when that alarm clock hits, whether you get up and do it or whether you sleep another hour. It's that type of mental battle that you're eventually going to have to win over in order to get yourself to the gym on a consistent enough basis to be able to almost have like a self motivation. And it's tough because it's going to differ per person. Everyone has their own backgrounds. Everyone has their own motivating factors for why they're going to go to the gym. Nobody can make those things more or less important in your life. That's going to be up to you. 
whether you want it hard enough. In fact, when I first started my YouTube channel, I made a merch line called Work For It and I wore a wristband that literally said Work For It because I knew nothing was gonna be handed to me and everything was gonna have to be done with hard work and dedication. And that's what you're gonna have to do. It's as simple as that. And I don't know if there are better tips and tricks than just telling you that at some point it has to click in your mind that I am going to do this and no matter how much it sucks, I'm gonna get to the gym. I'm gonna go work out for an hour and then that hour is gonna turn into an hour 15 and an hour and a half, you know? And it's going to get, it's going to become more fun to you because you're going to start seeing progress. More importantly, you're going to start going because you don't want to lose progress. That's the thing now for me is that I go to not lose what I've worked, you know, all this time for. That's my take on motivation. At some point, it just has to click in your mind that the amount of work it's going to take to achieve my goal is ultimately worth the cost that it's going to take. Simple as that. It just has to click eventually. And you have to determine, is this worth it? And if it's not, that's okay. To those that make it, it's going to just click. And they're going to be like, this sucks, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know? So what to do routine wise. So in the background of all this footage, I've been showing you some arms and shoulders, chest and back and legs. That's my split. I do that split twice a week. And then I take one day off of rest. That's if I have a perfect week. Life happens every now and then. And I have to take two days of rest, three days of rest. You know, it's like, Sometimes you can't get to the gym and that's a-okay. Your body needs rest. To me, I love working out as often as I can, but I ultimately know that in order to truly grow and continue to progressing, you need sleep and rest. Like that is just as vitally important as the amount of weight that you're lifting in the gym. Like there's so many factors. I mean, it, the food, what you're intaking, the sleep you're getting and the weights you're lifting. I mean, like it, there are, it's, I won't say it's a 33% split across the board, but I mean, I know that they all have an, a, a, a significant chunk of the pie when it comes to progressing and getting, you know, achieving your goals. You can do my, you can do that split arms and shoulders, legs, chest and back. That's what I'm on. I've been doing it for a few months now. I freaking love it. Is that the only way? Absolutely not. There's so many ways in this industry, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you as someone who hasn't even been lifting for two years, what the best way is. This is not a tips and tricks channel, nor do I possess the credibility yet to give you guys fitness advice. I'm doing this to show you guys my journey, to show you what's working for me, but it's very possible that there are more efficient ways and better ways of growing. But I'm learning. I'm learning along with you guys. So this is kind of like a documentation process. As far as how to stay consistent, to me, I have an accountability system with some peers and gym buddies. Going alone to the gym is tough. And there are days that I do want to go alone and I feel like you kind of get in that headspace of like, I'm just going to focus on myself, I'm going to do my own thing, and those are good. But for the most part, if you really want to stay consistent in the gym, you need at least one person in your life willing to take that journey with you. And if you don't have that, that's okay. I'm telling you, when I went to the gym, I started focusing on me. You kind of get in your routine. You go around the same time so that you see relatively the same people. Eventually, you make eye contact with enough people to where it's like, hey, bro, like at this point, I should have said hi to you. You know, it's been it's been two months. You and I are at the same gym, same time. I typically go for someone that looks around like the same progress level as me. And I would just go up and be like, hey, dude, seen you here around the same time. I'm, I'm Chase. Boom. Fist bump. Introduction. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. That's how I did it. That's how I have gym buddies now is that I literally did that for all the people that were like regulars at my time. I recommend you guys do that because in order in order to make sure that you're not skipping days unnecessarily, you need someone being like, hey, legs are today. Get to the gym. OK, brings us to the next category of gym friends and shyness. I read some DMs that people are too shy to talk to people at the gym. And that's fair. It's freaking hard. I mean, I joke all the time about talking to girls at the gym and how it's like literally the most painful thing ever. But that's a different that's a different, I'm not here to give relationship advice. But as far as like, as a guy finding another gym bro, I completely understand that it's still tough because there's that immediate evaluation of like, are they going to judge me? Are they going to like me? Like, are we on the same level? Like where, you know, it's like there, there's a thousand different factors, but I'm telling you, if, if you're just willing to go with that line of, Hey dude, seeing you here on the same time, keep going. I'm so and so craziest thing when I started when I started working out at the gym that I work nobody talked to each other and now that I've been going for over a year now we have such a big like social club like in the gym just because everyone started talking to each other and then like it was became the connections everyone started knowing each other but I'm to I I'm not I'm not claiming that I started it not necessarily claiming it but when I went for like the first 
three, four months and nobody was talking to each other. I was like, this is awkward. Like I, we should all get to know each other because the same people were pulling up to the gym all the time. So I was like, all right, let's be friends. And I think that's one of the most rewarding things ever because now when I go to the gym, I recognize literally half the people and I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. It's nice to have like a community where everyone's just like, bah, 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 you know? So let's talk about diet and cheat meals. I've posted fairly often about my chicken, beans, rice, avocado, spinach salad. I still eat that. That and like a ground turkey mix are my go-to. Protein shake, protein yogurt with oats, oats overnight, a bagel, maybe some pasta to, to really carb up. I'm typically aiming for, for about 3,200 calories, 420 grams of carbs, 240 grams of protein, 70 grams of fat. I got those numbers from an app called MyFitnessPal, which is a free app that you can get on your phone. And basically you put in your calories and then you kind of set what your breakdown is. For me, I'm more likely to eat protein heavy food. So that's why I'm heavy in protein. In order to grow your muscles and see progress is you need one gram of protein per pound that you weigh. I weigh 180 pounds. So by that standard, in order to achieve my minimum, I need to be eating 180 grams of protein per day. I have on average 240, so I'm well in a surplus. That's just because I'm more likely to eat a ham sandwich, chicken, turkey, than more noodles and bread. As far as cheat meals, yes, of course I have cheat meals. I try and limit the fast food though to maybe like once, maybe twice a week. So it's very rare that I actually indulge in something like that just because when I actually put in those foods into my uh, Fitness Pal app and found out how many grams of fat are in all of those foods, it blew my mind. So like for me, on a daily basis, I, I'm allowed to have like 70 grams of, of fat. I could have, I could probably have more, but like on average, maybe like 70 to 100 grams. I was discovering that with some of these foods, some of these fast food meals that I was having, I'm telling it's like 50 to 60 grams of fat just for that one meal. And so if you're doing that on a constant basis, like that's why that's why like definition starts to go down or you're not as lean as you want to be. Or maybe even you, you feel like, oh man, I'm not losing weight as fast as I'd like to. It's because those meals are so rich in fat. It's crazy. I had no idea had absolutely no idea. So when I finally started eating clean, lowering that fat down into the 70 range, wow. I mean, that's genuinely, that's when I felt like I really started to see progress. So that brings us into the next thing of not seeing results. I take whey protein, creatine, and I have pre-workout. And those are like my, my subs. Those are my extras that I have on top of just trying to eat clean. Protein shakes are good if you can't eat as much food as you need to. So that's how I really achieved that 240 grams of protein is that I'm, you know, I, I have a protein shake and that's immediately like, like 50 grams. Sometimes on days where I, I have stomach issues and I can't eat, I'll have two. And then that's 100 grams of protein. I routinely have a lot of stomach issues and it really hinders my ability to eat the amount of food that I need to in order to grow. My audience that has a higher metabolism, just skinnier, trying to put on weight, the moment that I finally started seeing size was when I took my diet seriously and was eating food in an abundance that I I just had never tried before. I mean, it's crazy how much food you actually have to eat in order to be able to see, to see a size difference. Creatine, I recommend. Let that build up for over a couple of months. I've, I started seeing progress around the same, same time. Just a monohydrate. You can get whatever brand you want. I am pretty sure mine's like body tech or something like that. Creatine monohydrate protein shakes. I just use gold standard way. And then a pre-workout does not provide any type of benefit besides really giving you more caffeine, more energy in the gym. You don't want to be groggy. You don't want to be half asleep trying to lift heavy weight. So that's why I crank out on 333 milligrams of bucked up. And no, we're not sponsored yet. <laughs> as far as being a Christian and an influencer in this industry, to me, this has always been easy to say, sometimes hard to do. Obviously, as a gamer, you're surrounded by people that act a certain way, talk a certain way, and it can be really easy to fall into that same style, even, even style of humor. I am so thankful for my faith because as a influencer, I've gotten to see that the financial benefit and even the fame benefit of this job is still a very empty 
feeling and something that yet again does not satisfy that want or future desire for success and fame. So it's always been very motivating to me to be a faithful believer because ultimately it is the most important part of my life and the thing that brings me the most joy. And I want that to be what people see and not, oh, look how fun the job is. Look how fun being an influencer is. That's simply just the medium to put on display that, wow, look how amazing it is to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. That's a responsibility I take very seriously. And I obviously, I still fail, but I hope that the content on both the gaming side of things and even the daily life showcase how important that means to me and being a better example to those that are genuinely curious, what does it mean to be a Christian? I cannot emphasize enough how insignificant working out, having a cool job, good life, all that kind of stuff is in comparison with knowing Jesus Christ, with reading his word, with worshiping him. That's where the true peace and satisfaction lies in this world. And thank goodness, because everything else is empty and vain and fleeting and is going to go away and you can't take it with you when you die. So this is never anything that I would want to cram down your throat either. But I also want you to know how much it's changed my life and just perspective on how I treat the job, working out, growing, the next goal, the next dream. That's where the true joy is. So if you guys have any questions or simply want to talk more about this, please hit me up on Instagram. I would love to talk to you guys more about this. Thank you all for watching, especially if you made it to the end of the video. I love you guys. It means so much to have support like that. That's like, wow, to me. If you'd like to join my community in my Discord, please do so. Link will be down below. I love you guys, and I'll see y'all in the next one.